You're all about FPV, but you're also about filming first and foremost. Well, today, stay tuned because, uh, well, just look at this. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, what we're going to be looking at is this bad boy right here. This is the Skull V3, the specialists, uh, specialist, I should say, and if you look at this thing, the first thing you're going to notice, look at that. Look where this GoPro is. This is a GoPro hauler, as John I would say, where your GoPro is front and center, right at the front. This is made for you people who want to do some cruising footage. You might be coasting down a mountainside. You want to, you don't even want to use like an inbuilt DJI or anything like that. It is all about having your GoPro up front in the center, capturing that gorgeous, juicy footage. And well, that's what we're going to be doing today. So this is the from the Flyno Shop Phenoceros, the Skull V3, the Specialist. What we're going to do, we're going to put it on the bench, break it down, look at the text and the specs, quickly go through some of the components, and then talk about the design of this frame, a couple of different options because it is very versatile. Talk about the warranties, all that sort of stuff. And then the fun part, we're going to get out to the field, fly it around, put it to the test, and find out how much of a difference does it make to our sort of cinematic style of flying the footage that we get when the GoPro is right up here at the front. So let's do it as a bit of an overview. What can I say? This one, it's a six inch. I don't think they sell binding flies on the website. This is just the frame that I'm gonna be talking about. It's about $90 for the base frame, maybe 97 or somewhere around that. And then I think there's an extra depending on what TPU mount you wanna get because this Skull V3, it can be so many different things. You know, I've got the specialist here, but you can change this front TPU section to sort of suit anything. I've seen some that cater to DJ models with the GoPro next to it somewhere they've got the session sitting like back here and the FPV camera down below there seems to be like a bazillion different types of TPU mounts you can get sitting up at the front to kind of make this frame the way you want it arm sizes arm thicknesses all that sort of stuff now yeah as I was saying as an overview what it is it's just a frame that comes together puts your GoPro at the front and it is for cruising down those mountains chasing those rivers getting some gorgeous juicy footage with your GoPro force and first and foremost do not be buying this frame if you want a hardcore freestyle rig that's going to take a crash because, well, what's going to break first? Probably a camera. Don't be buying this frame if you're going to be putting this thing through the races, going to multi-GP. I'm going to get on the podium. That's not what this one is about. Flynoceros or the Flyno Shop, they make quads with a specific purpose. And I'm a big believer that you can't have one quad that's going to do everything. If you want the best at filming, focus on your filming. If you want the best at freestyle, focus on that. If you want the best at racing, focus on that. This frame, you know, it is really just made for you filming fanatics out there. So now let's quickly go through some of the components. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because look this is I want you to know what I'm flying around with but I'm mainly just reviewing the frame itself so starting at the outside in of course we've got some big six inch props because that's important six inches I feel like are much more efficient and also a little bit better for that cinematography underneath of course we've got some gorgeous team motors ESCs on the arms which is a little bit different most of the time we have a four in one stack in the middle so I don't know that's kind of cool but you have so much space and real estate on these arms on a big filming rig like this you don't need to be cramming everything into the middle <laughs> and then of course in the middle we've just got our flight controller VTXs, all that sort of stuff we've got our antenna at the back and one little difference so we have our FPV camera sitting right up the front just here sitting above our GoPro so it's really nice that you can adjust both of these and I should show you actually you can let me just get a uh, little hex driver one second Alrighty, so I've loosened those up and what I really like is on these side parts here, I'll put a picture on the screen as well, you can slide it back and forth depending on what sort of flying you're gonna be doing. If you're doing crazy speeds, you might wanna crank it at some ridiculous angle. That's almost like Matty Stunts kind of style or maybe you're just cruising around, going really slow, the angle is a lot shallower and it kind of locks into place as well. So you get a nice sort of snap feeling so you know it's set and I really like it when you move this, it moves your GoPro and your FPV camera you know, simultaneously so you're not gonna be flying around and I know it's happened to me in the past. I've had my FPV camera cranked flying around and my GoPro is just facing at the ground and that can be absolutely a very annoying, especially if your focus is capturing footage. So I think it's really cool. This front little component TPU mount here uh, just seems to be doing a good job at solving that solution, putting everything up front and being able to adjust them at the same time. So moving on, uh, let's talk about the designer thing. I know I went in a bit of a design rant about this front TPU part. I really do like that, how you can move them around. The TPU from them is exceptional. I'm gonna say I like it. I like I like that you can change the arm sizes. I like the things you can do with this frame. It's gonna hold up, I think, very, it's gonna be a very robust frame in terms of the carbon. And the components, on the other hand, the only part I'd be worried about is you've got your GoPro up the front. So wouldn't it be smashing this thing
fitting into walls or anything like that. But overall, I like the design and how it's offering us a unique solution and it knows what it wants to be. It wants to be a filming rig where it can get out there and people can capture some gorgeous footage. Imagine putting like HyperSmooth with the new GoPro 8 in this bad boy. The stuff you could capture would be absolute magic. I also like to, you can put a huge variety of batteries on here. You know, I've got a 6S version, but there is plenty of room. So if you're gonna be designing a long range frame, you need to think what sort of battery are they gonna be putting on here? How big is it gonna be? What's the biggest you can get to this bad boy? Absolutely, a look at that size. Uh, it is huge. You're gonna be able to fit a big battery on there, fly around, get plenty of flight time, which is also gonna be imperative when you're going out to do long range. Now, the other things I wanna talk about, moving on, let's talk about the quality of the thing. And I gotta say, it's uh, very, very nice carbon. The TPU mounts are among the best I have ever seen. In the last video I did for the Rat Quad, which was in the Fly No Shop, a very different style of quad, I made the comment that, look, I don't know who's making their TPU mounts, whether they're outsourcing them, because they are just absolutely just I just don't think I've seen better mounts out there in terms of the quality of the prints the TPU mounts are absolutely exceptional the layers are very tight there's no fraying nothing like that so the quality of the carbon is awesome also the TPU is awesome and you get a lot of different options so whether you want to get like your crossfire antenna adapters there's some little parts you can put on the back so the quality well you can tell that they're a USA brand they're really looking after it but also it would want to be because it comes in at a bit more expensive than some of the others now what we should do let's move on to the pros and the cons before we go out to the field Field, fly it around and let's get the, pro, the cons out of the way first. Things that I don't like. This, you are gonna be breaking your camera if you have a very, very hard crash. This is not really made for those people who wanna sacrifice their cameras, do some really risky bando flying. This, it's all about that footage. And some people might be okay with that. If you're looking at getting this for a freestyle frame, I'd say this one probably in this configuration isn't your choice. The Skull V3, you can definitely get a different option, put the GoPro a bit further back and it becomes a more traditional quad. But in the specialist version that I have and I'm reviewing, I'm gonna say, well, you gotta think about what type of camera you're gonna be using and all that sort of stuff and having a GoPro at the front, it's gonna look great, but it is gonna come with some durability limitations. And then the other one is the price. I mean, it's up around the 100 buck marks plus your TPU options, so it could be even more. And that's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. Some people just want a cheap bando basher, but for others, they might be more than willing to pay for that considering the options and the TPU mounts and I guess the versatility that you get with something like the Skull V3. Now moving on, things I do like. Well, I do like the camera at the front. If you wanna do that type of flying, I think that's fantastic. I love the quality of the thing. I think it's designed well that gives people a lot of flexibility in how they wanna set their quad up. Whether you wanna have a huge battery on here, whether you wanna mount your GoPro a bit further back, depending on which TPU mount you want, it just seems to be a quad that it gives people a lot of options. So when you check in and out, you can choose exactly. You can set it up and say, hey, I wish I had that. Chances are they've probably got a mount for that. I mean, I've seen some with the DJI system sitting up next to your GoPro. I like how we have what I would call a roll cage or two front bars going across the front. They've been doing that design for a fair, fair while and that means it's gonna be very str strong in a frontal impact. But of course, in this particular case, I, you know, that's, you just ask them for your GoPro to explode. So anyway, and then finally, the other thing I like is Flyner Shop has a pretty interesting warranty program. I know you can do like trade-ins. So if you get a frame, you can send it back after a little while and all this sort of stuff and maybe get a trade-in on your next frame that you get from them. And also you can get a warranty on these bad boys where they do like a replacement warranty warranty, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to link that down below, but I've heard a few people talking good things about the Flonoceros or warranty as well. So uh, yeah, it's nice. If you're going to be dropping the premium cash on a frame, it's always good to think about, do you want to get that warranty, especially considering how far you're going to be pushing this thing and how fast these things zip through the air. But that's it on the bench. Let's go out to the field, fly it around. I'll show you some footage and just find out how what's the footage like that this thing captures. I'm a bit nervous about having my GoPro at the front because most of the time I just use a session. This is my filming rig. So uh, hopefully, it comes back in one piece, but let's go find out and see how the adventure goes in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field, about to rip it around and shout out to because we're going to be putting some hyper smooth on here. Hopefully, I don't smash my friend Tom's GoPro. So we'll see how it goes. This could be a bit awkward. Let's do it with the specialist, find out how this cruiser goes, all that sort of stuff, and rip it around on this gorgeous Australian afternoon. Radio, let's do it. Have some fun in three, two, one. Boop. 
Radio, here we go, and something I want to make very clear and transparent to my viewers flying around. This one, you know, we all know it's about filming. We've just been talking about it on the bench. I'm flying around, GoPro on the front, but I have Hypersmooth turned on. This is on the GoPro 7, so it's not even the new 2.0 Hypersmooth or whatever that comes with the 8, and now I finally get it. So this feels like, for me, the juiciest footage that I have ever captured. Just call me uh, Johnny V2 or something. It's a bit of a joke. Johnny's a legend, but this, the footage you can get and how silky smooth it looks when you turn the GoPro on and combine it with a craft that's made for it to put it first and foremost in capturing the footage. I mean, look at this. You guys know how I fly, but just watching this thing cruise around over the top of the wheat fields, it's just it's just some butter. Spread it on my toast. I absolutely love it. It is silk, and now I, I get it. I get why people, even when they have a session or they might have a DJI system with HD recording on board, I get now why they put their GoPro at the front because it's the first time I've ever tried Hypersmooth, and I'm sure you guys can agree. It's just... Man, it, it makes any pilot look good. So that part is a little bit crazy. Now let's talk about the craft a little bit itself, how it performed, and then probably some of the better areas to fly this round and some of the limitations, all that sort of stuff. So no oscillations. I didn't notice anything like that. It was a very, very well-tuned craft. It felt nicely balanced, even though we had that huge weight at the front when I was doing a flip and I was really trying to do some more acro flying towards the end of this, which isn't really what this is made for, but I didn't really notice that you know, it didn't feel like it had the strange counterweight at the front or anything like that. It just felt smooth the whole way around. It did feel a little bit heavier than some of the other quads that I've got out there, but that's to be expected. It's a larger craft. It's got a huge GoPro on there. It's got huge motors on there. So you are going to notice that weight a little bit more. The flight times are perfectly fine. And I just think that it's just a fun little craft. But first and foremost, it should be made for filming. Even though I'm doing some, I guess, more aggressive flips and just, I don't kind of think that's what it's made for. It's really made for if you take this thing out to the beach, to waterfalls, down mountains, across the top of fields, that's where this thing is going to absolutely shine, especially because you can put a huge battery on here as well and just go for days and just fly around, be one with the quad and then capture that gorgeous footage, bring it home and if you're putting on hyper smooth, you are going to be absolutely in for a treat. Now, what we're going to be doing in a little bit, we're going to hand it over to Jono, see what he thinks and luckily he puts his GoPro in there, but that's one limitation of this. I, to be honest, I flew this thing around quite a bit, but I only had a few flights because with the GoPro at the front, it is quite vulnerable, I should say, out the front. I didn't hit any trees, not with the GoPro in it, so uh, I don't think your camera is going to be holding up well in a hard crash. Yeah, they're meant to be kind of semi-crash resistant, but when you can fly these things around 100 kilometers per hour, smash into a tree, it's not going to be good for the camera right out the front. So uh, consider your environment and the type of flying you're going to do. And if you're a beginner, you're going to be crashing a lot, well, maybe there might be some other frames out there that protect your camera a little bit more because this is just asking on first crash to explode that GoPro into pieces. But look at this, across the top of tree treetops, it's never looked better, never looked smoother. And yeah, I just think uh, it's got a nice little niche market here that it knows what it wants to be. And the Flyno guys, they're, they're doing it well. Anyway, what we should do, let's hand it over to Jono, see what he thinks and also check out some of his flying. We can uh, critique his flying as well. It should be interesting. Let's do it. Radio, thanks very much editing. So now it's a new day. Mm. We're going to cruise around. Jono, we've got the Skull, the Specialist. I want to know what's your thoughts on it, and then we're going to go take it for a trip. And it's from the Flynosaurus guys. Yeah, and yeah. I think yeah. you've got a Flynosaurus frame. You yeah, I got one the of past. the one of the like um original Cerberus or V2 Cerberus. Yeah, yeah, one of the Cerberus. I quite liked it. I thought it was a um, really nifty sort of thing. It was, yeah, strong frame. That was really cool. All right, so what do you yeah. think about this one? What do I think about this one? Like, uh, initially... And I'm going to stop your GoPro recording at the front. Too. Oh, yeah. And I should say, I'm kind of happy that yours is in there, so if it explodes, then it's not me who gets in trouble. Yeah, yeah, I wreck my own GoPro. That's great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yep. Yeah, like, um, like looking at the frame, it's some um, pretty wild-looking thing, really, like, long, wide arms. The arms are, like, right out of the view of a camera and stuff. I'm um, pushing that GoPro right out the front so you can get some good footage. Clearly, it's meant for good footage because otherwise you wouldn't risk your GoPro in such a full frontal Dramatic position. Frack. So this, yeah. this this one, I, I'm I'm picking. We're not doing bandos with no. this guy, are well, we? Well, it's your <laughs> GoPro, mate. You can do it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I'm gonna take I, a pass on that one. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a pass, but um. Yeah, man, it's it's looking like um like yeah, it's going to be a really good cruise. We've got the six inch on there. They've got this like cool little thing that they started doing with it. So we'll get it right in there. And you probably already talked about nah, this at yeah. some point. But um, they TPU mount the whole top part of a the frame there as a vibration reduction. They've started doing that with like their yes. a few of the other frames as well, and they've moved it onto this one as well. So not only do you have TPU there, but you got TPU on that part there. So you're like doubling down on that. So It'll be yeah, interesting really to see how that goes. Vibrations too, yeah. Easy. Are you rocking hyper smooth on your footage? Ah, uh, yeah, always nowadays. Yeah, right. I, I got a cheat mode because I'm a lousy pilot, man. Okay, <laughs> all right, let's do it. Let's plug in and get your impressions.
Well, right. let's do it, brother. Let's start ripping. I'll see if I can fly this without breaking it. Oh, wow. What? Why do you say that from the get-go? Oh, it's just, that was just like a really smooth takeoff. Like I'm used to, oh, I shouldn't harass the sheep. That's not nice. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sheep, what you doing? Yep, all right, all right. Oh, it was just a really smooth takeoff. Like the throttle curve on it's really nice and it comes up really cruisy. Like normally, like I normally like, you know, you see my takeoffs, they freak you out. I like punch up and then smash out really quickly. Whereas this thing, just a nice, real slow takeoff, stayed level the whole time. Yeah, I, I, I dig it, man. Like feels really smooth to fly. See how it goes, like, cruisiness-wise. Yeah, I'm just giving it a bit of, like, throttle and stuff like that to see how it goes. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely not quick. It isn't. Um, yeah, it feels very, very, very much like a, like a cruiser sort of thing. I don't think I'd bando this. I think I would really love it if we were running, like, down the coast at that spot that I really like. There's this nice, like, spot down the coast um, near where we live that's, like, a nice beach and some cliffs and stuff like that. I reckon that this would be awesome for that. Feels, like, really smooth. Definitely doesn't feel like an acro quad. It doesn't feel like I'm going to get wild with um, flips and rolls and things like that. But um, if I were, like, mountain surfing or cliff surfing, yeah, this is feeling like pretty on, on point for it. The throttle's smooth, turns nicely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real keen to see how my GoPro footage comes off of this one for hyper smooth and stuff. I suspect it'll be really pretty. Except for the fact that I'm really jittery on the sticks most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, pilot error. Does it feel weird with the GoPro at the front or anything like that? Can you notice that big heavy bit of mass at the front? Um... It, it, it just, um, it doesn't feel that much different from a normal quad other than like, the pitch does feel a little bit less responsive. It does, but it just feels like a heavier quad, which it is. It doesn't feel like it's really inhibited. Far out, those flies are annoying the crap out of me. Sorry, man, that will buzz in the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, because um, I shook my head a little bit there, my goggles are coming off, so I'm going to come down and land. Alright. Yeah. I'll go get it. You buzz your flies. Ah, oh, far out. <laughs> Rightio, Jono, so final thoughts on the, not this, I was almost going to call it the Cerberus. Fly Cerberus. <laughs> final thoughts on the Flynoceros, uh, the Specialist. Yeah, uh, so final thoughts. Yeah, I'm really, uh, really smooth on the takeoff and stuff like that. Smooth flying, I like it. It does feel like a heavier quad and it is quite a chunky boy. It does, but obviously, like I said. I'm going to turn your radio off, hang on. It's yeah. driving me nuts. Inactivity <laughs> alarm. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, no, keep going. Yeah, keep yeah, going. okay, yeah, so yeah, is a heavy boy, it feels heavy. Um, it doesn't really feel that like it's inhibited with having the GoPro so far out, it just feels like a heavier quad. It okay, does. So you couldn't really notice it too much besides it's heavier. Yeah, yeah, like it, 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 or it just feels like the whole thing's heavier. Okay. It does, but that being said, like the, the throttle curve on it was really smooth. Um, it felt very controllable. I'm, I'm liking that. I like how the camera's right out the front as well. It gives you like that nice thing. I'd like- who, um, who would you recommend this for? Um, oh, it's definitely going to be for those um, those guys that want to do like the cruising runs. So you, like I was saying before, you want to do the mountain surfing, you want to do like a beach run or something like that. And what about your GoPro at the front? Are you a fan of that or what's your thoughts? Oh, you, if you want that that killer footage, like cruising down a mountain, doing a beach, like I keep saying, uh, you're going to have to have it out there. Otherwise you're going to have your props in the view and stuff like that. If you're going to risk your quad that far out on that kind of terrain, you're probably willing to risk your GoPro anyway. I am not doing any of that right now because I my GoPro is precious to me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't afford to get a new one. So yeah, that, yeah, that's, that's it. it. <laughs> yeah, I ain't buying a new one anytime soon. This is my GoPro Too for easy. the year. I'm not due for another one until next year. Nice, man. <laughs> uh, if I was game enough to do some more scenic stuff, I would probably be a fan of that. I quite like it. Um, I'd like to see how my um, hyper smooth footage has turned out. Sure, and if, right. if the GoPro footage comes out really crisp, then it's a thumbs up from me. That's really good. All right, nice. Thanks, man. No worries. Alrighty, there it is. There's my review of the Flynoceros Skull V3, or the Specialist, whatever you want to call it. A whole bunch of different options you can put at the front. But what I'm talking about, the one with the GoPro at the front, because first and foremost, this is a cruising cinematic rig. This is not really so much for the flight experience, the crazy bandos, definitely not for racing. This is when you put your big GoPro up the front, you turn on Hyper Smooth, which is ridiculous, by the way. This is the first time I've ever kind of played with Hyper Smooth, and you can see why if you want to chase that beautiful footage cruising along the beach doing some crazy shots this bad boy definitely is going to be right up some people's alleys i can understand it's not going to be for everybody but for a definite niche out there people who want a frame that does kind of the things that 
you know, just, it's all about getting that HD footage, getting that silky smooth GoPro recording on the front. This thing is uh, probably one of your better options out there. It's fact too that it's soft mounted on the top. Everything, it's just reducing the jello and kind of almost sometimes looks like it's on a gimbal. Very, very impressive stuff. So I'd love to know what you guys think. Drop the comments down below. I'm gonna put the link as well and also check out their warranty. They've got like a replacement program, a whole bunch of different extras if you're thinking about picking up one of the Flyno stuff. Doing some really cool things over there. Other than that, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying. And also too, which version would you get? Because there's a couple of different versions of the Skull V3. You know, I've got the specialist, but what one do you think is best for your purposes and why? So I want to know, read that. And also I'm sure the guys over at Flyno Shop would be interested to know that as well. Anyway, all that other stuff. And as always, happy flying.